Hi everyone, this is Brent from Frameitall. Today I'm going to show you how to navigate our new design tool on frameitall.com and some of the basic functionality that comes with it. So first off, on the bottom of your screen, you'll see three icons. Our half is our two foot straight timber. Our straight is our four foot straight timber. And then our curved is our four foot curved timber. To bring a board onto your scene, you simply click on one of the icons, hold down that click and drag it onto your scene and that will generate a board on the scene. If you want to move around that board, you can either click it by the center of the board, and this will allow you to bring the board around while maintaining its orientation, or you can drag it by the brackets on the end to allow it to rotate and sort of snake around as you drag it. If you want to change the color of your board right above the icons, we have three options for one inch, classic sienna, uptown brown, and weathered wood. And if you want to go for our two inch Sienna profile in the bottom left, you'll have an option between one inch and two inch, and that'll generate the two inch classic Sienna profile. If you want to connect two boards together, you simply drag another board onto the scene and you connect them like so. Once they're connected, you can also go to a higher level and you can connect a board that way as well. You'll be able to tell when they're about to connect as when you get two brackets close together, a yellow cylinder will appear and it will highlight the two brackets where the connection will be made. And then once you release it, they'll connect automatically. If you want to change the viewpoint that you're looking at the app, there's three different ways you can do it. You can either zoom in and out by using the function in the bottom right, using your scroll wheel, or using two fingers up and down on the trackpad of your laptop. You can rotate around your viewpoint by holding down the right click button of your mouse or your trackpad. And you can change your point of view by clicking down the scroll wheel of your mouse and dragging it across the screen. Now let's get into some of the functions in our action bar below. We have five different tools here. Let's start with the first one on the left by dragging in a board and selecting the stake tool. When selected, the stake tool will replace your cursor with a hammer tool. And when you highlight over one of the brackets of a timber, it'll highlight it in light orange. When we click on this, it'll do an animation and it'll then stake down that bracket. On the bottom of the bracket, you'll see it's highlighted either light blue or orange. This indicates whether it is an anchor stake, light blue, or if it is a stacking stake used, which is orange. So now, once we have it staked down, what we can do is if we rotate this board, it'll stay staked down in that area. So we can't move this, this bracket, but we can move around the other point. If we were to try this same thing, but without stake down, you'd see that the board would simply move around freely. When it's staked down, you can do anything that you would otherwise, connecting boards to each other or even connecting on another layer. Now, moving on, our next tool is our freeze tool. So our freeze tool on the option bar, when selected, will replace your icon with a snowflake. And when you hover over a fully connected structure, it will highlight it blue. When you click on that structure, it will have a snowflake icon underneath it when you're hovered over it with a small blue circle in the middle and a larger blue circle on the outer perimeter. When you hold and drag in the circle in the middle, it allow you to move your entire structure while maintaining orientation and shape. And if you drag along the outside ring, the larger outside blue ring that will allow you to rotate your structure. If we were to try to do this without this structure, you'd see that our timbers actually just move freely and change shape and orientation. Next up, we have our auto fit tool. The auto fit tool when selected will replace your cursor with a pencil. And as you draw, it'll generate either straight or curved four foot boards. I recommend that when using this tool, you go as slow as possible so that the tool recognizes properly what sort of board you want and in what uh, size or rather what, what direction. Once you're done, you can also connect the structure to itself. And this structure or this tool is very useful for making playground borders and landscape edgings. So now the next tool is pretty simple. This is our eraser tool. When you 
Select this, it will replace your cursor with an eraser icon, and when you hover over any board, it will highlight it in red. And when you click, it will delete the one at a time. If you delete anything that you don't want to, in the bottom right, you can use the undo function, and this will undo the last action that you performed in the app, whether it was adding a board or deleting a board. If you have an entire structure selected with the freeze tool, and then you choose to use the eraser tool, it'll highlight the entire structure, and when you click it, it'll delete the entire structure. Finally, we have our snap to grid tool. When selected, the boards will snap to the grid points on the field, and this will allow you to rotate your board around. So this tool is best used in addition to the stake tool. So if we stake this down, when we rotate our board, it'll snap every 45 degrees or so. When we have a second board here, we connect these two together. This will allow us to have very sharp angles. So if we wanted, we could have a 45 degree angle snap to, we could have a 90 degree angle, and so on. If we were to try to do this without the snap to tool, our board would be allowed to have a free range of motion, but it's a little more difficult to get those precise angles like 90 degrees or 45 degrees. Without the snap to tool, you'd sort of be eyeballing it, but when we have this selected, it snaps automatically. So now with this done, let's go to our next tool, or rather our next function in the app. So if we go down to this bottom gray rectangle here, we see raise beds, draw your own. This is where you drag and drop boards. And now if we go to the left of this, it'll say raise bed sets. So if we click on this, it'll bring up options for preset configurations. So when we hover over each configuration, it'll generate it on the screen in yellow. This will show a preview. And then if you click on that structure, it'll generate it on the screen. You can also, instead of just clicking, drag it onto the screen to get a more precise location if you want to drag it to a certain point in your scene. We have a wide range of categories from basic shapes to different types of stars as well. So now if we delete these two, we can also, if you want, just work on the grass itself by deselecting the show grid option in the bottom left. So those are our basic functionalities of how to use the app. Um, hopefully this helped you guys out and you can design some really awesome gardens.